issue. <laughs> Alrighty, what you're looking at is um, the uh, three inch outlet for the uh, social zone of the uh, Well McLean 480 that uh, was discussed in an earlier video. And that is right next to it is the uh, two inch uh, gas supply uh, going into the boiler room. This is a shot of the basement of the uh, social zone hall. And this is the entrance to the um, underneath of the sanctuary zone, which is you can gather is much older. This was one of the uh, indirect returns, which has been since disconnected. It's the electrical disconnect for the two boilers, and that is the uh, fire door and the inspection certificate. And that is the boiler we discussed earlier in a uh, and this is the boiler for the sanctuary zone. So the sanctuary zone is uh, not a great as load so it doesn't need as big a boiler. This is an SGO, well McLean. This is the Carlin Easy Gas Burner, which goes into it. Skim tapping. This is the um, operating low water cutoff probe type. Uh, what I call the uh, psycho guard. There is where the, uh, let's see, that's where it's tapped into, right back there. Yeah, there you are, right there. There's the uh, sight glass. The uh, sight glass blow down. Because this is a commercial setting, uh, there is a, it requires a secondary uh, manual reset style low water cutoff. And this tapping here is a little too uh, close to put a, a direct mount. So we have a remote mount as the probe is here and it goes to this unit here. You have your test and your reset button. So if the uh, primary low water cutoff fails, um, this this will then take over, and uh, you have to come down and manually reset it. This will look. Service switch is here, and keeping in with the idea of re um, redundant controls. Normally what is mounted here is a pigtail and the pressure control was mounted about where my hand is now. Uh, that's probably not the best location uh, for uh, the uh, pigtails uh, because it can be get clogged, uh, particularly when the boiler is new and has a lot of uh, gunk in it and uh, that can uh, cause issues. It's mounted there by the uh, Well McLean folks primarily so they can stack the boiler higher in, in the uh, in the warehouse. This is a package boiler. It comes uh, pre-assembled and you uh, uh, deposit it here. So what we've done is we've added a T with a clean out plug here and uh, each control has its own separate pigtail. Uh, this is the operating control, the uh, PA404A. Uh, it comes usually set at about nine 
PSI, like it's going to be uh, steaming crabs. And of course, we turn the, uh, the knob down to its lowest setting there. And uh, the, this is the uh, code required pressure gauge, 0 to 30 PSI. You can remove the gauge and blow into here and make sure this is clear. We add a, uh, a, a male T here with a plug. So this can be removed and this can be checked. And this is the um, pressure control controller with the manual reset. Uh, set at about five pounds. So these systems should never have to run more than two pounds on the coldest day of the year. So if this fails, then uh, this backup kicks in at five pounds and keeps the uh, pressure at a, a safe limit. The boiler has two outlets, two two and a half inch outlets, which are both required at this on this size. And we've used a drop header to allow for, one, ease of installation, because you've got uh, extra degrees of freedom to uh, take up uh, any uh, piping threading anomalies. And also, it uh, by directing the water down to the bottom in a forceful manner, uh, drier steam can then be taken off here with this uh, three-inch outlet. And this is the equalizer line, and uh, there is the Harford loop there. Right in the foreground here is the uh, feed system. Uh, we have a, a brass and a stainless steel um, fittings transitioning to a stainless steel valve, which then transitions to the copper to reduce uh, corrosion on feeding. So that's the uh, Water feed line, we use the same uh, uh, Ken Dorf that uh, we mounted the um, uh, flue pipe to. And there's the uh, feed line there. Comes in with the shutoff valve, backflow preventer, manual bypass, and shut off uh, this is a feeder here and of course the uh, VXT feeder now this system still this has a leak in it uh, it's a fairly high number we want to see that as low as possible of course uh, it looks like a, they have a, a leaking radiator which will have to be replaced this is a uh, Ken Dorf uh, directing the um, low voltage wiring from the thermostat and also um, from the uh, block flue switch, as we will discuss later, and it's being supported with, um, with Kendorf. Our drain valve there, we usually uh, replace the one that's supplied with a quarter turn valve. Also, there's usually a plug down here, which uh, we remove and use a cap, because a uh, cap is much easier to uh, remove and, um, and deal with. We're flushing out the bottom of the boiler. This is the uh, safety valve, 15 pound safety valve. Rather than mount it on a 90, we mount it on a T and use a plug for uh, cleaning out uh, dirt, which does collect in there from time to time. And we use a quick disconnect uh, compression fitting so that you don't need a torch uh, to uh, remove this uh, this valve. There is the uh, return with a full port uh, quarter turn uh, drain valve and uh, all steel construction. Uh, the wet return um, was completely replaced. Uh, we used copper because most of the wet return already was copper um, uh, from an earlier install. So we transition to brass and uh, stainless steel here at the Harford Loop. We've used a Y configuration uh, for, um, because the uh, wet return is sort of a, at a weird height, uh, we were concerned uh, that uh, there might be water hammer here. And so in order to uh, 
to facilitate the water getting back as quickly as possible used a, uh, a, a Y connection which uh, um, generally uh, reduces uh, uh, water hammer in that area. A nice slab poured by the customer. And a drain valve here, full port for, for servicing, for flushing out the uh, junk. And this is the uh, six inch, one of the six inch uh, um, valves, uh, gate valves that we removed um, from the uh, system earlier on, on installation. This is the oversized barometric going up to a rather high chimney. Uh, so when this thing gets going, the uh, this thing can, this thing was designed to pull um, oxygen and air through a, a big giant pile of burning rocks. So uh, the draft on this tends to uh, be over much. So we um, use this oversized barometric to uh, have good valve authority to make certain that uh, we don't have too much draft on here. Um, what happens is this modulates second by second as the uh, draft and changes due to uh, barometric pressure, temperature outside, inside, and so forth. And that makes a stable draft here for the uh, three-dimensional ball of fire inside the, um, the burner. Should the uh, chimney get blocked, this will swing this way, uh, pour hot gases onto these sensors here, which will then uh, trip and uh, not be uh, automatically resettable. You have to remove this container to uh, get in there to the switch and uh, get it to reset. There's our two boilers side by side. Let's see how it goes.